New Era, baby. Hello, everybody. It's your host, Mike. Uh, Sarah's not here this week. I'm hosting along with me on this episode of After Live, episode 44, is Sean. Hey, Sean. I, uh, I'm in mourning, Mike. I'm uh-huh. in mourning. Star Wars is over. I don't mean like it w- it's dead. I, like, I'm not saying like the movie was bad and it's dead. I'm just saying the Skywalker saga is over. So <laughs> we're not going to talk about the actual movie, but I am in mourning over the Skywalker saga having ended. Yeah, I'm not talking about it either because I haven't seen it. So Yeah, but Mike, you also don't count. I, I don't care. Mike, are you going to watch this movie? In, like, next year. Yeah, Mike, are you... I have no rush to watch it. Are you going to go to the theater, or are you going to wait for it to come out on digital? On digital, probably. Yeah, that's what I figured. (laughs) That's okay. No, it's, um... It's fine. We're not talking about that. I mean, that's a little same with the Collider Live crew this week because they, didn't, they talked about Star Wars on Wednesday, but they sure. kept the live chat disabled to avoid spoilers. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we are going to discuss this week in Collider Live, December 16th through the 20th, which is for them 283 to 287. Um, throughout this week, Roka was on for the majority of the week. So he's become like the official part of Collider Live now, more or less. Yeah, and I love it. He's a... God, his stuff is amazing. I think uh, uh, I think we have Kalen to owe for that. I think Kalen was taking all the credit for that. So, you know, everybody go to Kalen because Kalen is taking all the credit for Roka being on Collider Live a lot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of things happened on Monday's show. I took some notes down uh, for this week, so... Um, the Top Gun Maverick trailer in trailer two came out. They talked about that. Have you seen that trailer? Ah, uh, Top Gun Maverick. I actually have seen it twice, only because I uh, it played in front of both of my Rise of Skywalker. Ah, shows. there you go. There yep. you go. Um, of course, being you, you probably haven't seen the original Top Gun. No, 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 no. no. Would you be willing to watch this new movie? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'm probably going to watch the original before I, I watch this one. But I, I, the trailer looks cool. It, it, I'm not sure. Was that the second trailer? Yeah, uh, the second, so the second trailer is, I'm trying to remember, how did it go? It was. But that was oh, the it, second Top Gun Maverick trailer, right? We'd, we'd already gotten one, hadn't we? Yeah, we got one before that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just was making sure because I couldn't remember. Um. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna watch it. I'm kind of confused as to what the actual premise is. It kind of, because, well, just because it, it, it seems like it might be a more personal story and that's kind of exciting to me. Cause I didn't mm-hmm. see any like, this is the big threat, you know? It was just kind of like, it, 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 it looks like it might be a little bit more of a personal story for him and I'm excited to see that. So, uh, I'm probably yeah. wrong. Probably not gonna be that, but who knows? Yeah, based upon that, because it's interesting how they gave him orders to come back to teach at the academy because he yeah. w- was a student. He was a student in the original, so he came he comes back after so much experience. He's like this radical dude, and he's legendary with his flying, <laughs> you know. And uh, I mean, all the flying in this movie is like he's in the cockpit, you know, doing yeah. it with the uh, pilots. So yeah, it looks great. It's it's great. It's like way better than the original. Like it stepped it up. Like it, yeah. um, way personal information uh, story for Maverick as a character. I know somebody dies eventually because they show a casket in the trailer and a salute yeah. ceremony. So I don't know who's oh, gonna yeah, die. Yeah, they in did show movie. that. <clears throat> yeah, um, it's like uh, it's like Dark Phoenix showing uh. A funeral in the trailer. Say, Although like, <laughs> everybody figured out who died in Dark Phoenix. Well, I was gonna say, the yeah, there's, there, there are there are rumors of who's who's gonna die in the film, but I don't know for sure. But uh, Miles Teller is in this film as well. He is actually playing a son of a previous character in the first film who died. So is right. uh, <laughs> you want to hear something embarrassing? 
What? About about uh, Miles Teller. <clears throat> the first time what? I watched the trailer yesterday at my um my Rise of the Skywalker showing, I leaned over my friend and I went, Is that Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> <laughs> he looked like Shia LaBeouf! With like oh his God. beard and mustache, he looks a little bit like Shia LaBeouf in this movie. The second time I saw it today, I was like, oh no, that's Miles Teller. But <laughs> Okay, that's kinda funny. Yeah. Um I'm not yeah. kind of a funny guy. That's that's hilarious. Um, okay, so a weird story popped up on Monday. Roxy brought up about penis fish. Yeah, yeah. I look. I tuned out what they were talking about at that point, but I I, I saw the images on Twitter of um the penis fishes. So peni fish, P- I guess. Peni fish. Peni fish, fish. I think. And, right. And it, and the discussion just went weird because Roxy's like, would would people actually you know. With the penis, uh, no. and I was like, and then Roka's like, you know, you gotta, you know, experiment in the bedroom. So, you know what? I was like, you know what, Roka, oh. you're not wrong. It's true, but it's just like it's with true. penis fish. Oh, jeez, Jesus Christ! Hey, look, okay, you, you know, we don't judge people here, right, Mike? Right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is gonna be a weird show, guys. This is gonna be a weird show. This is, and we're off to a great start, I guess. Okay, so hang on, I'm gonna do this next topic. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hello and welcome to Into the Grid, a Power Rangers recap. No, but we are talking about Power Rangers because they talked about Power Rangers. All right, yeah, I just wanted so, to do that little joke. So go ahead, yeah, Mike. Yes, good joke. Uh, because we do a podcast about Power Rangers. Yes, 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 yes. That was the joke, Mike. Thanks for explaining it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in a giggly bitch mood. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they brought up about the reboot, which we actually discussed in, on last week's episode before them. So we were on top, we're on the ball. But I wanted to mention that they were talking about that because because they were asking around like who's a big fan of Power Rangers in the in the room in the office, and uh, yeah. Perry Perry was mentioned because she liked the 2017 film. I didn't uh-huh. watch. I didn't watch the movie talk this week when they talked about it. So I think okay. she was talking about it so much about it. She's so passionate about it. So, yeah. Um, I mean, we said, we thought that the idea was a little, um, maybe not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Roxy, Roxy apparently is, is slash was a fan of Power Rangers because she, uh, dipped down after like my morphin apparently. So she talked about how she had like, the pink yeah. ranger come to her party, so just like yeah, yeah, Kimberly, oh. Kimberly Hart, Kimberly Hart. I was just thought okay, and it, it kind of drives me nuts how I'm, I'm working on something where it addresses this in the future, a future project of mine. But it's just like people who dip off after Mighty Morphin just really pisses yeah. me off. It's like there's a lot more than just well, Mighty Morphin. Some people grew up, Mike, unlike us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most yeah, people aren't aren't doing a Power Rangers Dino Thunder recap podcast at Going to the Grid on Twitter. Uh, most people aren't doing that, Mike. Most people grew up. I get I mean, it. I get why people dropped off after Mighty Morphin, but but you can't be like Mighty Morphin was the best and there was nothing better than it if you haven't watched the rest of it. Exactly. Like that. That I will agree with you. But like, if you only watched Mighty Morphin, I'm not gonna get mad at you for stopping. <laughs> But I mean, it's true. Know? But uh, if you only watched Mighty Morphin and you're like, Dino Thunder sucks, it's like, get, get out of here. Get out of here, you yeah. nerd. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm kind of curious how that movie is going to evolve into at Paramount. So hopefully it's not what it is. Uh, hopefully <laughs> it might surprise us. Who knows? I, I actually read somebody tweeted about it and it's like, what if it was like a like tongue in cheek meta kind of comedy where it was like twenty one jump street in a way? Okay. Which I thought it was interesting. Oh yeah, that might be a little interesting. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm just not a fan of the uh the pres the, 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 the premise. I, I don't I, any sort of like I don't know. I just wish it was a twenty seventeen sequel, Mike. I know. I, uh, I wanted the I sequel to 2017. Um, this, uh, the money show, they had an interview with Trisha Helfer. Um, yes, Trisha, who I didn't yeah. know who she was. Uh, she, she was great. Um, 
You haven't seen Battle Scar, Battle Scar, Battle Star Galactica. Hey, Mike, who are you talking to right now? <laughs> That's right, <laughs> youngin, <laughs> Zoomer. But yeah, it was a great interview, regardless, because she was playing Dracula in the Van, the Van Helsing show, and I was like, ooh. And she's in uh, Lucifer. I have so. watched a little bit of Lucifer. Uh, I watched, I think, the first season, or maybe half of the first season. It was pretty yeah. okay. Um, I guess we're past the point of spoilers at this point for Crisis, but he was in, he had a quick cameo in Crisis on I, Infinite Earths. Yes, I noticed that, actually. That was actually pretty cool. So it's... Did you watch it, Mike? Nope. Okay, cool. Fuck it still you, happens. Whatever. Let's just move on. <laughs> I will get to it. I will. I will binge watch it all of them together when it comes back in January. You know. Uh, uh a caller question from Monday show. That I it's pretty interesting to uh, pick up and ask ourselves is because for them, I'm trying to think because. It's been a decade. It's we're coming too close to the decade here. Uh twenty twenty is coming up next year. But somebody asked the crew where were they in twenty ten? And I was like, Okay, let's ask ourselves that. Where were we in twenty ten? And boy Yes. I, I just didn't realize I was asking this, but Sean, um, where were you? Where were you well, in twenty ten? I was ten years old. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. Is that like fifth grade? Maybe, right? Like 10 is fifth grade, I think. So it would have been in fifth grade. Yep. Um, 2010, pro- probably watching the Clone Wars every night. That would have been airing at the time. Uh, I don't know what else would have been airing at that time. I would have been playing Power Rangers stuff. Would have been playing with Star Wars stuff. I would have had the Millennium Falcon still. Don't have it anymore. Really mad about that. Uh, I had, uh, I had, uh, the, uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighters from, uh, episode three. Those are pretty cool. Don't have them anymore. But, uh, that's what I was doing in 2010, Mike. I was being a fucking child. So what were you doing? Jesus Christ, do I? Couldn't imagine being a 20 year old or 19 going on 20, uh, going into, uh, let's see, because in 2000 and let's see, do, 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 2008, I graduated from high school in the spring. I went into college, a tech, a tech college in the fall of 2008. I would have been one, two, three, Four, four or five semesters into college at this point, getting my degree in business management and marketing. Um, you got a degree in marketing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, yeah. How do you, how do you do that, Mike? What was the thought process? The thought process after high school was either you know, get a job or get an education. And yeah. but why choose marketing? So it was business management first, and then it led into marketing. Okay. Just as a double major, I guess. Just are to... you into marketing? So here's the thing: I all that information ten years ago is yeah, yeah gone. But were you so, into marketing at the time? Well, <laughs> I thought it was interesting to take those classes, but okay, yeah, it was. I thought it was interesting. To so you. Say. You you were you appreciated the, su- the subject. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna... <laughs> I, I, I appreciate marketing. I just I'm not going to use it. Cause I what don't was it that. about marketing that you were really into? Why were you like yeah, I'm going to be a marketer? <laughs> it wasn't. It was like advertising, maybe like you know, be like yeah. an ad, ad ad executive. You're like somewhere. I want to manipulate people. Is I want to make commercials, you know, be like I want to see yeah, how you target manipulate audiences. Manipulate people. The same. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Manipulate people. <laughs> I just thought that it was a unique angle, you know, just seeing how that side of the world works, at least, you know, demographics and numbers and it's all about numbers. Jesus Christ, that was the worst thing. Ugh. But, uh, Christ, now I feel old. I'll be like, You're the one that 20... asked the question. You're the one that asked the question. I don't want to bring up that I was 10 years old in 2010. Well, actually, no, I would have been 11. Yeah. I would have been 11. 
I lied. So, but still, my point stands at what I would have been doing. So I would have been in sixth grade then. Yeah. Or maybe yep, yep. seven. I would have been somewhere. Yep. So I was alive. <laughs> Tuesday show. If you want a, a nonsense episode, Tuesday is like the most nonsense episode because they talked about a lot of topics and nonsense. And it yeah. was like... They talked about where they where they love to sit in the theater because they talked about like screenings and plus ones. Where do you like and to sit in the theater, Mike? I love I love taking the back row of the theater. Oh, and I, right in the middle, just trying to get okay. into the middle of the theater in the back where you can see the whole screen, way in the back. Yeah, I I sit kind of in the middle center. Uh, okay. like middle row, center if I can. Uh, I get my tickets far in advance because I am a snob. So right. I right. I like I like to have a nice viewing experience. Um, but yeah, I go like kind of middle, kind of center. I was a little I was a little further back my first time watching the Rise of Skywalker than I would have liked to be. I was I was closer this time, so it was a little bit nicer because it was like a. The first time I could see the entire screen and like the walls to the side as well, I was far enough back. But this time I was like in the middle and the screen took up my entire vision without having to like move my neck around or anything. So like that was perfect. I just sat back, I relaxed and it was like it was mm-hmm. just there. Um Wow, I just I just I just spent a whole lot of time talking about where I like to sit in movie theaters. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, I, I hate it when I'm late and I would have to try to scramble to find a seat. So I end up sitting like, for dear God, the end game screening. Fuck me, I wasn't in my usual spot and that really yeah. screwed me up. So I end up finding a spot on the left hand side, like almost to the top, but like in the middle, uh, in like in the corner. So I was like cramped in that corner, just like yeah. watching from trying to turn my neck to the right looking yeah. at the screen. I was like, eh, it's still good. But of course, I think I've told that story on the podcast during that time because I was sitting by kids and dear God, that was horrible. And I'm not going to lie. Uh, it drives my friends crazy, but I, even though I get my tickets in advance, I need to be there like at least 15 minutes before the movie starts, before the trailers start. I just, I need to be there before in case anything happens. I'm very much a person that gets to the movies early. Uh, I love watching the trailers. The trailers Same. are sometimes my favorite part of the movie going experience. Yeah. When I went to, yeah. when I went to see Venom, that was definitely my favorite part of Venom was the trailers before <laughs> Venom. Uh, the movie blows, <laughs> but, uh, I'm very particular about my movie going experience and I drive my friends crazy. That's hilarious, but cool. Um, of course, we keep... Yeah. And this next part is going to be fun. I keep wanting this to happen. It's just like... And all of a sudden, it's like, gone. Why Quentin Tarantino? What did I so tell he's you? Done with Star Trek. He's done with Star Trek. He's just like, nope, I've got other projects in mind. Like, the, the interview that Raleigh brings up, I read that interview. He also brings up about... Um, uh, what was it? Uh, was it Halloween or something? Like some horror franchise that he wants to like stick in for a sequel or something somewhere. I was like, okay, you're kind of weird, Tarantino. Just stick to a project and go for it. I don't know. So he's up in the air with uh, with his tenth project. So I was like, all right, fine, no Star Trek. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. I hate to be that guy, but you know, I'm that guy. What? I guess I I I didn't think it was gonna happen. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was man. being I was being hopeful. I was being hopeful, but you know what? Things happen. Yeah. Uh, would you would you really have taken uh would you really have taken Star Trek over another Quentin movie? Oh no. Like an original I, one? I, I I I honestly I don't care what he does. I mean, uh-huh. if it's a Quentin Tarantino, it's a Quentin Tarantino, but no. If I if he I wouldn't like stop watching his next one. It's just like, it's just like but Star like, Trek. If if it had been Quentin Tarantino does an original movie or Quentin Tarantino does Star Trek, and that those are his last movie, right? So it's either he does Star Trek for his last movie or he does one last original movie. Which one would he would you have 
wanted for his last one. See, and people are kind of debating that the most because his original stuff is what people thrive for. Yeah. It what would you on, want? I don't care what other people want, Mike. I know. I want I your know. opinion. I know, but it's just... <laughs> this is the thing I'm trying to push you to do more, is give your own I, opinions. <laughs> I know. It's good. I'm trying to break my bones. Yeah. See, I would be curious to see what he would have done with Star Trek. Because yeah. he, with franchise stuff, he... He he has adapted a book before into a film, so it's close to being based on material for. So I was like, if Star Trek was another base material film for him, I would have been like, try it. I mean, sci-fi. I don't see sci-fi as much from Tarantino. So, yeah. all right, I'm gonna surprise you here. If there were two, if there was a movie theater, Quentin Tarantino Star Trek was playing in one, and Quentin Tarantino's original film was playing in the other. It's the last Quentin Tarantino movie I can ever see. I can only see one of them. I'd go watch the Star, the Star Trek one. Really? I I told you that it wasn't going to happen because it wasn't going to happen. But I think that it would have been extremely fascinating to see him do Star Trek. I know. Uh, mostly because I'm not a big Star Trek fan. So I don't really have any expectations. Uh, now, if right. the question has been Star Wars, I would not want a Quentin Tarantino Star Wars movie. Oh, no. But, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but... When it comes to Star Trek, I'm not a big fan. I don't really have any expectations. I'd be fascinated to see what that is. Oh, yeah, I would have been, too. Um, they, was that last week, or was that the... It was, like, last week it was announced that Tarantino was in the works of doing Kill Bill Volume 3. I think that was last week. Yeah, it was last week, and nobody brought it up, but I was just, like, thinking that would have been... So maybe it would lean towards Kill Bill Volume 3, possibly. So Probably. Probably. Uh, like I said, this episode was, uh, episode, the show on Tuesday was all about nonsense, but some of it was heartfelt because they were talking about anxiety, how much they had social anxiety, you know, how to deal with anxiety. And, uh, everyone has it. I mean, you probably have it. I probably have it. We deal with it in so many different ways. And I just wanted to brought that up because yeah. sometimes we need to get personal with each other. And I don't like doing that. But yeah, I have. Um, I get if we're gonna do a little uh, personal. We were doing a thumbnail for the convince me video, and uh-huh. Wade wanted to do uh, uh, pictures of us on the thumbnail, uh-huh. and that is something that I do not want to do. Uh, uh-huh. I do not like putting my image. I, I don't like putting myself out there uh, uh, physically. Or, or not physically, but uh, visually. Um, that's why I'm doing this, <laughs> where I'm right. I'm doing a microphone. Uh, so, yeah, talking about anxieties, that's an anxiety, I guess, that I deal with. I know, I think Roka was talking about uh, his body dysmorphia. Uh, yes. I don't actually know what anybody else brought up, but... Um, Cody brought up social anxiety. Oh, yeah, I've got a lot of that, too. Yeah, he's he was like with people and stuff like that crowds he just couldn't get social i'm trying to think of what else there was darina and roxy were talking about that in general but i thought it was really interesting okay so roca brought up um riley brought up about david ayer's dirty dozen remake which was interesting because that's pretty cool but roca's like manly movies let's talk about you know manly movies because it's the comeback of manly movies you know and I, i thought it would be interesting like segue into like talking about movies that are manly, manly movies manly you know just like the def- but then it I don't think I like def- manly movies to be honest it because here's the thing what they went down the show was they talked about the definition of it like what's yeah. a manly movie and I'm thinking I understood what Roka said he said you know manly movies you know with you know with action big guys you know action you know fast think- cars all that stuff <laughs> I was thinking along the lines of like Rambo or like Die Hard or uh Right. Or um Rocky, like those kinds of movies is kind of what yep. I think of with what he was describing. And yep. uh I like the Creed movies. I'm not a Rambo fan, uh not a Die Hard fan. 
I <laughs> my most anticipated movie right now is going and seeing Little Women next Thursday, so that tells you what my taste is. Uh I want to watch a hidden life so badly. <laughs> uh, so that that's that. Those are my tastes. Uh, but yeah, what about you, Mike? God, I love those type of movies, like the Rambo's, the even uh-huh. like even like Commando and any Schwarzenegger movies. Which people, I'm not gonna play it, but I have a soundboard app <laughs> full of cor- quotes from Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's my favorite actor. So, um. Dear God. But I, I was like, I was expecting like a conversation about those movies on the show, but they just like, Doreen and Roxy were just like poking at Roku, just like trying to like, like, what's a manly movie? It's like, wait, can, wait, can females not be manly? You know, what, what was Xena Warrior Princess? So I was just like, I wanted to scream at them, but I was like, it was a civil conversation and I was like, okay, it's fine. But I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge action junkie. Like, um, Fuck, you can actually put John Wick movies into the manly category because it's so action oriented. I think of action oriented movies as like manly, manly movies because it has a male figure being, you know, so macho, as I said. So, yeah. so, but, uh, now I'm actually kind of excited to see Dave Ayer's Dirty Dozen because the original film was pretty cool. So, I've never seen the original film. Yeah, that's why I kind of figured. That's why I was giggling to myself. Have uh, you seen it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is it good? It was, yeah, it's really good. It's a classic. Um, Westerns are, uh, well, obviously, Roka's thing, but I do like yeah. occasional Western here or there. So. I'm not a big Western guy, I'm not going to lie. Um, Wednesday show was pretty cool because Koi is back. I love Koi, John Drew. Hang on a second. I just got to... Go ahead and, uh, uh, where's the place where I ask? I'm just gonna ask him here. I'm gonna ask him live on air. Josh, can we try to get Koi on the show? Please. All right, cool. We're done. Uh, we're good with that. Um, uh, Koi is the best. I love Koi so much. Every time he's on the show, it is the best. Uh, I felt so bad for him having to talk about Star Wars on the show. Uh, I know, I he know. Was not having a good time with that, but he's just so high energy, and he's so much fun. And I'm also usually very high energy, uh, so I appreciate it. I love, I guess, I like listening to people talk fast and like. But the only thing about shows with Koi is I listen to a lot of shows at 1.5 times speed because I just i I can right. consume it faster and I can keep up. I can't do that with Koi because then. <laughs> Everybody, because like everybody else is at Koi's normal level, and Koi is talking like a supercomputer at that point. He's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like Koi makes no sense at one point five speed. Everybody else does, but he elevates to like three times speed when you put him at one point five because of just how fast he talks. Um, but yeah, I loved having Koi on. Yeah, it was or, I loved episode. listening to Koi on it. it. It's a good show actually because. Um... It went off really weird because they, they first talked about fisting <laughs> at the beginning. And, Ro- and Roxy was, like, so nah. like, dumbfounded by it. She, I'm she fucking like, on Roxy's side with this. I'm with Roxy. Uh-uh. <laughs> she, she was uh-uh. like, well, how do people have, like, is it, like, a pleasure thing? Nah. And they, nah. they, uh, how are people, like, I was thinking, wow. And then Koi just got really into it, too, with Dorita. And I was like, whoa, guys. That's the Clatter Live I know talking about fisting um <laughs> you remember the do you remember what one of the biggest conversations on the first episode of the show ever was oh god, kind of like oh. big topics you remember shit oh god that's because i do what the hell was it i can't remember now i'm blanking i can't remember oh i, I know it was something it was about christian shaving his balls Oh, that's right. So this is definitely Collider Live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. In with that, um, what was it? Yesterday. Not yesterday. Fuck it. I'm, I, we're recording on a Friday. I'm thinking, damn it. Sorry, people. Tuesday show, they mentioned about rap because Roxy's been in getting into Eminem. You know, he says, she says Eminem is the best living rapper out there. And they talked about it on Tuesday show, but on Wednesday show, Koi 
said that he won't actually pop in on Tuesday show, but he couldn't. But this show, he they actually went into full detail about rap music, Eminem, the best, you know. And then Roxy brings up about rock stars, you know, the best yeah. rock stars, which I thought was interesting because I liked when they talk about music a bit more on the show now. Yeah. I you agree. listen to rap? You listen to rap? Um, a little bit. I don't listen to any specific genres of music. I kind of just listen to whatever I listen to. I uh, like, okay. I like some, um, I don't know. I don't know if anything I'm going to say is controversial. I don't know. Uh, we'll just go with it. I like some, uh, Eminem. I like some, um, uh, uh, I, I really like Childish Gambino. I like, uh, I like some DMX. Uh, um, some British rap is is okay. Uh, I I mean it's not gonna count because it's theater. It, it counts, but Hamilton obviously I love Hamilton. Right. Uh, and in the Heights, I'm very excited for. I'm trying to think of other rap that I like. Um, I don't. I could not name any other artists that I like, but there's definitely other songs that I okay. like that I listen to. Yeah. Um. I can agree with Roxy a bit because Eminem is like top tier, uh, yeah. living living. Rap Eminem, and, Eminem is great. Yeah, yeah, he's he's great. I can agree with Koi and like Roxy because just like you can't beat Eminem. Fuck, he's, no. he's like he, you can't top him because for living, rapping person like dear God, he's. And I'm not a, like, I'm not a Kanye fan. Yeah, I've heard. I, I know Roxy is kind of a Kanye fan. I know that, but I was like, people were like, eh, mm, uh, I'm yeah, not a, I'm not a. I'm, I'm also a 20 year old white boy, so like, I like a lot of classic rock. I mean, yeah. I listen to a little bit of everything. I think my music tastes are pretty diverse, to be honest, but mm-hmm. I think I'm not really equipped to give an opinion on this. <laughs> well, neither are they because they're white people on the the show too. Yeah, so, but uh, they like grew up in that culture, in, in well, like in like in the rap culture. Like they are, they're obviously familiar with it. I'm just not. Is my point? Oh, that's true. I, okay. I did the right joke because it was easy. All right, Mike. You always take the easy jokes, dude. Yeah, always. I go for the easy jokes. It's because I want to make people laugh, Mike. I'm an entertainer for God's sake. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. No green M and M's. You didn't listen to my writer. I'm out of here. I'm done. Get your ass off <laughs> I'm over here. Um so we're not talking about Star Wars. Wait, Mike, what did you think of the Rise of Skywalker? I was gonna ask you that, you dumbass. Well, I want to hear what you thought of it first. I haven't seen it. So you okay. know. Alright, I guess I will say something. Um Just say something. Non- the Mandalorian spoiler. episode seven was the best episode of the show so far. It was great. Check out the Mandalorian review show. We're gonna be recording it tomorrow morning. I'm so excited. Um, Good. Good. about episode nine, uh, I've seen it twice. I think the first two thirds are messy, but enjoyable. I do not like the ending. Uh, I put it over the prequels and the spinoffs, but below the original trilogy and the rest of the sequels. Um, it's like a 3.5 out of five for me. I don't know. I'm sad it's over. And there's one specific thing that happens at the end that, is I'm just really depressed about it. It ruined my entire first viewing experience. And then I liked I, watching it again. It didn't bother me as much, but it still ruined the ending. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking about, it. I'm getting sad right now talking about, it. I don't, I just, I, it was not uh, a movie made for me. Uh, I have different interests in star Wars than what this movie is trying to focus on. So, yeah, Mike, that's what I thought of episode nine. Oh, God. <laughs> um, They casted a young Gal- Gal- G- uh, Galadriel. Uh, Galadriel. 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 Because, uh. Um, wow, I think both of us are very not equipped to talk about this. <laughs> no, I guess not. I you guess not. Like, how do you say it? How do you say, how do you say the, I know Josh is like in the corner editing this 
God damn it, you fuckers. You can't believe you can't say the names of that <laughs> the character from one of my um, favorite things. Elf. It's an elf from Lord of the Rings. She's an elf from Lord of the Rings. Um, I think she gave them something after Moria. I think they oh, go to God. her, maybe. John I think Sherry. they go. Oh, hang on. Should we reveal the truth about this? About what? Have we seen Lord of the Rings? Oh, I've seen Lord of the Rings. I've seen Lord of the Rings many times. Have you never but seen then, Lord of the Rings, Mike? But, but did you? Why are you not like you had the confidence? Like I, I don't know about Lord of the Rings. I I don't know about Lord of the Rings, but I still... You've seen seen the films, though. Yeah, I don't know about... I've seen them a couple times. I know Galadriel's an elf. That's what I said. I said Galadriel's an elf. I think they go... I'm being being serious right now. I think they go to her after um, Moria. Uh, Maybe maybe it's before Moria. I don't know. They go to... It's in the first movie. Uh, I think she's in the other one. She was in the Hobbit movies, but tacked on. Dear God, I I still haven't seen the films, okay? Yeah, the hot... Wait, which ones? All of them. Not even the original three? I, I, I still have Why? them on me. I just oh, haven't God. had time to sit down for three hour movies. You gotta break them into chunks, my dude. But I'm you excited. Can watch, you can I'm... watch the first one up until they leave Rivendell, and that's like half the movie, and then you could take a break there, honestly. You could watch them on like hour and a half chunks, and you'd be fine. Because I'm, I'm kind of curious about the show they're working on from Amazon. So I'm kind of like, I, it depends yeah. how they chunk it up in the show. I think that'd be better for a show than a movie. I, because I'm like the, the runtime for me is like most movies for me. The runtime is a big factor because it's like, God, do I want to sit through that whole thing? Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of curious good, what the show man. is. I'm telling you, I, even if you watch, I, 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 I know, I heard it. Yeah. I always hear it. Like I even like. I told everyone, I was like, oh, you yeah, haven't seen Lord of the Rings? Oh, my yeah. God. But also, Mike, there are some movies that people do that with, and they're completely overrated, uh, like Joker. But um, uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to Lord of the Rings, they are they are very good. I don't love I them know. as much as other people do, but uh, I did marathon all three extended editions back-to-back before the first Hobbit movie came out in the theater. Uh my friend next to me had a large refillable popcorn that he just kept for 12 hours refilling butter in it. And by the end of it, there was a small pool of butter. So he now has a heart condition. Um, not really, but I'm surprised that he doesn't. Uh, they're good movies. Watch them in chunks if you have to, but you should watch them. They're pretty good. I, I plan to. I plan yeah. to. I'm not one of those people that's like, if you don't watch them all at once. Then you shouldn't even do it. Watch it in your own time. Do whatever you fucking want. Okay. The last, up, thing. <laughs> the last thing on Wednesday's show. A quiet they, place. A quiet. P- it's funny because they talked about the quiet place two teaser, but it was like Roxy's like Parth. Quiet place yeah. Parth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A quiet place Parth two. I I got the teaser before my second screening tonight of the Rise of Skywalker. I also went the uh, Parth two. <laughs> Or Parth. I, I went Parth. Parth. I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. Quiet Place Parth. I was like, yeah, I get it. I get it. I see why you're confused. Um, I know. I, I saw that at Logo. I was like, yeah, I placed in Quiet Place above Part 2. You kind of make the 2 into an H and it looks like Parth. Have you have you seen the first one? Because I have not. I have not either. All right, then let's fucking move on. Move on, folks! I just thought I wanted to make a cookie yeah. because Roxy thought I was Parth, and I thought that was fucking funny because that's what our Roxy does. She misconfuses little details like that. Thursday show, Roko was back on with a uh, Christian. Yes, yes, Ruvakaba. Yes, um, what a delight! What a delight! Because Cody thought it was the funniest show they did because he was on there. <laughs> Um, cause they're both two wangers in the same area. Oh, so good. And then Alex is showing off his mustache. <laughs> What's funny about Thursday, cause I, cause you told me you have not seen the Thursday show. I um, have so, not. So here's what you missed on the Thursday show. Alex was showing his mustache and then throughout the whole show, R- Rook is like, I'm going to come in there and shave that mustache off. Wait, so wait, did... was Christian in the room with them, or was he yes, in the Yes, yes. You know, he was in the I room with it. This episode, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Get he was Cody in the... in the room. Get Cody in the room. Get Cody <laughs> in the room. <laughs> he was actually in the room with everyone else, because they were... Yeah, 
So yeah, Christian was with Roka, Darina, and Mark Riley. It was like really cool to see him bullshit with them, just joke around bullshit. It's hilarious. And that was this the cats episode because they were talking about cats, you know, uh, the cats review, which on I'll skip ahead a bit on Friday's show they actually yeah. revealed that uh, a Good Morning America took a snippet from the Thursday show. Because oh. Dorino was reviewing cats and they put it into the, on live television. Oh. So they made a oh, yeah, national he, television. I talking about that. Yeah, they made a national TV. So just for that little clip, because Christian was in that show and he was like, yeah. in, you can see him in the clip, you know, with him. And they, they, they asked him, like, did you like being in that clip? You know, he's like, uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, do what do you think? Cats? Cats? Oh, I'm going to see cats. Oh, you are? <laughs> I'm going to see Cats. I oh, it, The reviews are fantastic. I know. Um, I know. The reviews are so I read them. bad. It's so great. good. Uh, uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm staying away from that with the 10-inch pole. <laughs> Speaking of 10, 10 it, Christopher I, Nolan's Tenet trailer. What would you think of I, the Tenet trailer, Mike? Oh, my God, dude. Dude, this dude, movie. Dude, dude. This movie's uh, gonna be balls to the wall. Oh my god! The trailer came out on Thursday, and yeah, I was like, I took a risk. It came out on Thursday. I saw it pop up on my YouTube, and I took a risk and I said, it might play in front of Rise of Skywalker, so I'm gonna stay away from it. I did not watch that trailer until Rise of Skywalker, and it played before Rise of Skywalker. Watching that trailer on the big screen for the first time without knowing anything about it is. Perfect. It looks so good. Robert Pattinson looks awesome. Uh, John David Washington. I love yep. him in Black Klansman. He's fantastic. Yep. Uh, I guess it's, I'm so excited for this movie. It looks so uh, weird. I'm so excited too. It's, I've seen one reaction to it and someone said it was Memento had a baby with Inception. That sounds awesome. It, it is because it has best of both worlds, and I'm kind of excited because I know Roka said Roka said it was like it had shades of Inception. And like he was like, I don't know. It's like it's like it sounds so much like Inception. I was like, dude, really? So what? He can have similar elements in his movies. It doesn't have to be just you know time, you know, related stuff. Um, but my God, it's like. So I'm kind of, well, God, I wish I'd, I, I would love to go see it with nothing else besides watching that teaser because I don't even know what's going on. It is so, yeah, yeah. it's so amazing. Like, oh, man. It, 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 like, I, like I've seen reactions to the trailer. There's a scene where he's like, well, welcome to the afterlife. And people are like, what, yeah. what, 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 huh, huh? <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, if you guys go to minute one and second thirteen, you'll see in the background is Batman. It's a Batman sequel. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to see that. Um, Ken Napsack joins the latter half of the Thursday show, and the last half of that show was basically calls, but also they focused on John Williams because. There was a new article list on Collider.com, which was the top 10 John Williams scores um, by Adam Chitwood. And they went over their top 10 John Williams scores, and they kind of did like a guessing game to see if they got all their personal favorites on his list. And they almost got it. But uh, are you a John Williams fan? Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> of course. Is that a joke? No, I was actually asking a serious question because I knew uh, you'd be a fan. I'm, you know what? I like his Star Wars stuff. I like his Harry Potter stuff. There's nothing I haven't heard that I don't like. The Superman theme is is iconic. Um, I'm not a like diehard John Williams fan. Like I'm not like um, uh, I listen to every John Williams song that's ever mean. Uh, but I am. Like, you know, I like his music. So, talking about his best score, I think it is the Star Wars The Force Awakens. Oh. 
I think race theme is maybe the best bit of Star Wars music in all of it. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, going over their favorites, that the Star Wars that they mention was uh, Empire Strikes Back. They mentioned uh-huh. A New Hope. Okay. And, and Ken Knopfler comes out of nowhere and says Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith is also really good. Yeah, he he loves that one, but I think on Adam Chitwood's list it was A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. I think those are the two that he picked yeah. picked out for that. So Fair yeah, I think they 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 did mention race theme in the show and talking about Star Wars theme, uh, John Williams score. So I also think Kylo's theme is really good. Yeah, that was cool. I I, I love when they talked about music especially scores and soundtracks because I know Doreen is a big score head with Mark Riley. So yeah, that was a, it was fun to hear. And they, they also played like guess the, a John Williams score game after that. And they were trying to guess John Williams scores. So that was pretty cool too. Like, like do, when they do that too on the show now with the guess that song games. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fr- I, I like the games. Uh, today's show, Friday's show, was pretty uh, pretty simple. Um, Perry was on okay. again for the second week because she was on last week. I love Perry. Yep, Perry's amazing. Perry was fantastic. I think they did like color questions at one point. They asked like, "What was the best moment of the year?" Okay. And they and Perry brings up the fly incident from the movie talk. Okay. Like she was like catching the fly, and she's like, Psh, yeah, yeah, that was good. Fly. Yeah, and they played yeah. it, on, and they actually found it. And I played it live on the show as well, so it was just like, yeah, that's the best moment for Perry. They talked about mostly what their fears were because uh, they, they their guest for the interview was Forrest Galante, who was uh-huh. a animals expert. So yes, yes, that was an interesting uh, interview. Um. So. They talked about like what animals they were f- fearful of. So, are you getting any fears of animals? Snakes. Yeah, George same with Darina. She yep, doesn't nope. like snakes either. Fudge snakes. Yeah, I don't like bugs, insects, bees of any kind. Just like Perry, so don't like bees. Bees are just fucking hell. Yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, here's the thing. We're not done, Mike. No? Because we still, you know, we got some time. Uh, yeah. We got a short episode today, so I'm gonna, we're going to play a game, Mike. Yeah? You're going to go into the rapid fire section. You're going to pull out five questions to ask me, and we're going to take turns asking each other the rapid fire questions we usually do the get, with the guests. Ooh. It won't take us long. It'll be an extra couple minutes, but it'll be a little something added on to the end of this. We didn't have a big w- episode this week. Uh I was very distracted by Star Wars all week. Uh, Sarah's not here because of, you know, the impending holidays. Next week will also probably be a smaller week because it's going to be Mike and I again alone yeah. next week. But uh, I wanted to pad this episode out a little bit with something a little fun. So I figured we might do this. So once you have your five questions to ask me picked, tell me. We'll start with you and then we'll alternate questions. Uh, I will start it off. Here we go. Here we go, folks. All Ladies right. and gentlemen, this is Rapid Fire co-host edition. Yeah. Yes. Let me start it off with, does pineapple belong on pizza? No. What is the last movie you've seen? High Life. Oh, okay. Have you seen a UFO? I have not seen a UFO. What is the most overrated film? Um, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. <sighs> no, 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 that can't be the most overrated film because I <laughs> all I hear, all I hear from you guys is, is "Last Jedi," this "Last Jedi," that. It's over. I'm the only one that likes it. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys just have an argument over all the time. You guys always talk about it. <laughs> it's overrated because I hear it so much. It's too much, people. Too much. Favorite animated film besides The Lion King? Ooh. Uh, <clears throat> into, the Sp- into the Spider-Verse. Uh, do you remember your dreams? 
No, I do not. Okay. How many licks does it take to get the center over Tootsie Pop? 2,647. Did you have a teenage rebe- uh, rebel phase? I do not actually know. Sadly, no. Okay. When's the last time you puked? I cannot remember. Ah, that's how long yeah. ago. My last question, best film trilogy? Back to the Future. Fair enough. Han Solo or Indiana Jones? Han Solo. All right. All right. Yeah, that has been uh, After Live for you folks. Uh, it is a shorter one, so we'll probably get you some more content. As Sean says, we'll do it next week, just the two of us. So we'll cover yeah. Collider Live as much as we can. I know they're doing a pre-tape for one of the shows next week and the following week. So that'll be interesting to see what they do for the pre-tapes. Other than that, Sean, where can people can find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Sean underscore AFK. You can also find me on, uh, what do I do over here? I do other shows over here. I do the Mandalorian review show. I also was on the interview for an SCN after live thing coming up. I'm not sure when it's coming up, so I'm not going to say what it is, but be on the lookout. I helped interview for one of those segments and, uh, me, uh, fuck, Mike and I, Mike and I also have a podcast where we watch and recap every episode of Power Rangers Dino Thunder called At Go In, or it's Power, it's In Go, eh, motherfucker, this is really the worst read I've ever done. Into the Grid, At Go Into the Grid on Twitter, and fuck you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, folks. Thank you. Um, you can follow this podcast in particular, Afterlife, among other shows, like the Mandalorian show as, uh, Sean mentioned with the Met and with uh, SCN Afterlife, which fuck you, you traitor. Why'd you go over there and do Did something for them? Oh my god. I, I know, I know. That's fine. It was nice. It was nice of you to do that. It was pretty cool. I can't wait to hear that interview. I just thought, <laughs> traitor. <laughs> just like in Star-, Star Wars. Um, you can follow everything at Merc with the movie blog. That's our, uh, banner name here. Our producer Josh does everything there. Just, Try to follow Movie Blog Merc. It's on YouTube, Twitter. Follow him on Twitter. Uh, anchor.fm slash Movie Blog Merc is actually where you can find it all. Your favorite podcast platforms for that. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mike Mixtape. And that's it. See you next time as we cover Claire Live another week. Bye.